Hey, big boy. Welcome to Burnstock. You didn't think I'd do it, did you? You didn't think I'd do it. You didn't think I'd put out a video by Friday. But here we are. It's actually probably Thursday because I'm going fishing tomorrow. And I'm not going to be out here making a video. But I am going to tell you five tips that I've learned working in a small shop that might help you out in your small shop. So I have a 140 square foot shop. My last shop or my last couple of shops were all pretty small. My first one was actually a shipping container when I started this YouTube channel. So I've kind of learned a lot about working in a small shop. So here are five tips that I think are pretty important when working in a small shop. And tip number one, like and subscribe to my channel. I'm just joking, but obviously, yeah, you should like and subscribe to my channel because I do have some pretty good information. Right now, I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to set you up where you can see what I'm about to talk about. So tip, num so tip number one, what I would say is be very wise about what equipment you buy that takes up floor space in your shop. I have a Laguna Fusion 2 table saw. Love it. I like having a big table saw. You may not need a big table saw. I cut a lot of big lumber. So I like having that big table saw that can really handle the type of work that I do. I made room for an industrial air cleaner. It works phenomenal, especially in a small space. I don't, however, have a big joiner. I don't have a joiner at all. All I have is a long level, which I'll, I'll show you. Um, <clears throat> I don't have a big joiner. I don't have the space for it. I'm being picky about the tools that I'm going to have in the shop. Now, I do want to get a bigger planer, but I'm still trying to figure out how that would work in my footprint because... Everybody says have everything mobile. I don't have everything mobile. You can do that, but I just I don't like when I when I push on a table saw that's on wheels or mobile, you have that give behind it. I like having a solid table saw and I have everything set up to where it kind of works really well together as kind of like a almost like a culture. Make a culture in your shop. And I want to show you what I'm talking about. And this will kind of go along with step two. So step one, be picky. That's my biggest piece of equipment. And I use a table saw on everything. Step two, or tip two, is try to make everything work together. I don't know what the right word would be. I'm going to say organism is kind of cheesy, but it's the only word I could think of. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. My miter saw station... My table saw and the, the cabinet on the other side, they're all one surface. I have the miter saw far enough back to the wall and the table saw far enough off of the wall that if I run a sheet good through here and I have to use this space, the miter saw fence won't stop me from being able to use the full fence on my table saw. Now I do, you, I do lose a little bit of walkway, but not that much. I still have plenty of space to walk around and I use the dead space behind me for my vacuum. So you try to make every tool work together as much as possible without having to move anything. And it makes the whole experience so much better in your shop and you don't have to have everything on wheels. I don't want a shaky table saw. I want this solid. I don't want to roll around stuff all the time. Now I do have my planer on casters, but that's temporary. Like I said, I want to upgrade my planer and get a bigger one. So you want to try to make all your tools work together as much as possible and if you can't have something like this to where it's set up and you don't really need to move it then yeah put it on casters but when you do you still want to make sure you have one level all the way across your shop number three make it easy to clean your shop i enjoy working in a clean shop an organized shop everything has a home not everything is clean, but it's, it's a pretty clean shop. You make it easy to clean your shop, and you're going to find that you actually clean more often than you used to. And what I mean by that is, for instance, this vacuum hose, I have it on a boom arm, and I can get all the way to the other side of the shop, vacuum up everything I need to vacuum, and it's simple. All I do, unhook it. If I want to use an attachment, I have an attachment. I can take it off of here, and I can clean up all the way across my shop. And you'll find that as, as you make it easy to clean your shop, your shop will stay pretty clean. I'm not saying it's immaculate, but this is the cleanest my shop has ever been. 
one of the best things you could put in your shop, especially if you have a small shop. And I can, because it swivels, take it off of here. Watch, I'm gonna show you. And I can pull, I can reach everything I need to reach all the way across the shop and I can vacuum up the entire shop pretty, pretty easily. So make your shop easy to clean. And then that leads into step four. I think we're at four. Like and subscribe to Burn Sock. No, step four is actually clean your shop. So if you make it easy to clean, but you never clean it, you're kind of wasting your effort, right? Make it easy to clean and then actually clean your shop. I try to vacuum up, not every day, but every other day I'll vacuum up the shop. It takes five minutes, if that. Make it easy to clean and clean that thing up. You need to clean your shop. Get in your shop right now, pause it, don't stop it. Keep, matter of fact, put this video on repeat and keep it playing to kind of help the algorithm. But stop what you're doing and go clean your shop. It looks ridiculous. You need to get out there and clean that shop. You should be ashamed of yourself. I kid, I kid. So step number five or four, wherever we're at, be picky with your scrap wood. Scrap wood builds up a ton. I'm gonna set you down. And I'm gonna drop the tripod. So, scrap wood builds up like crazy. And what I've started doing is being very picky about what I keep. I'll keep, let me, man, the light. I gotta work on the lighting. Okume, I'll keep the larger cuts. That's Okume, Sapele, or Sapele whatever, however you pronounce it, um, alder, and some grade A cypress. I'll keep stuff like that, and larger cuts. I had, that used to be full of uh, smaller cuts, and it just got to where it, it just flowed and flowed throughout the entire shop. If you got a small shop, you really don't have space, unless you make the space, to keep a lot of scrap wood. If it's just some crappy pine from Home Depot, I know, I know wood's expensive, but that's not something I'm going to keep. I'll make a lumber rack out of it or something like that, but I'm not going to keep it. It's just going to bow up anyway, but I'll keep the more exotic species or the stuff that's big enough that I can make something else to sell out of it. If you'll see, everything I have, there's some pretty, pretty decent sized pieces. So, so I've become picky about the wood that I keep in my scrap wood pile. And I'm not saying be wasteful and throw everything away, but I did just recently burn an entire stockpile of scrap wood and life is so much better now. And the last shop tip for a small shop is invest in dust collection. You need a dust collector if you're woodworking. I recently got this air cleaner. It's a 140 square foot shop. I overkilled it. And I bought the industrial one, and it makes a lot of difference, especially right over my table saw, right over the blade. <clears throat> I have to blow that filter out. And I said in the last video, I blow that filter out about once a week. I probably just need to get a new filter. But uh, I just blow it out with the air compressor, and it makes, I mean, it is night and day difference. Keeping the shop somewhat clean, it helps out so much. It's tremendous. And here's one thing that we're gonna to have to work on. I can't run this AC while I'm in here recording and it gets hot quick. That AC is off. And buddy, it is muggy. Can you, is the camera fogging up? It looks like it's fogging up on this end. It is so humid. Look. Maybe this will be the intro. And so I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope the tips help you out. If you enjoyed the video, if you liked the advice, like, subscribe, hit that bell icon, help me grow the channel. Like I said before, I'm giving away uh, dust. People keep messaging my phone and distracting me. I'm giving away a Festool Domino Joiner when I hit 1,000 subscribers. If you want to have a chance to win, all you got to do is subscribe to my channel. Um, there was something else I was going to say, man. So, oh, another good thing about being in a small shop, it's easy to upgrade the area. I'm about to rip out all this crappy looking OSB and put plywood. I don't have to have 
a hundred sheets of plywood to put walls up. I only need like 15. It cuts down on cost. It's nice to be able to have the, if you have a small shop, right? You can upgrade it for a fraction of the cost. You can really invest in your creature comforts. We just put a window in, a window unit. We have AC. I'm about to do some rubber flooring on the bottom. Because it's a small shop, it's not that big of an investment to upgrade it. So don't get discouraged that you have a small shop. Just focus on upgrading it so you have a better experience in your shop. Invest in creature comforts. And that's kind of a bonus tip. Don't worry about all these big shops. Be happy with what you have and make it efficient. Make it work. Make everything work together. Keep it clean and throw some creature comforts in there. Get some AC. Get some rubberized flooring. Get some uh, upgrade your walls. Make a nice tool wall. Whatever you want to do. So lastly, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. I'm going to get out of here and get... Oh! I'm going to get out of here and get into my house where the ACB pumping.